All right, what I want to talk about today is labor vouchers and wage slavery. Okay, I did a video about wage slavery and I might go into it a little deeper, um, but I deleted it. Um, for those that know my channel, I've deleted a lot of my videos, a lot of information, uh, a lot of my past videos. Some of the videos I had had 30,000, 20,000 views on. Um, but during that time, I was in corporate America, so I didn't really want to you know, kind of deal with some of the blowback <laughs> and pushback for some of those videos because at the time I was a wage slave. So we're going to get into labor vouchers. Um, and, you know, there's an illusion by people that you redeem uh, your paycheck in Federal Reserve notes. I don't know who's telling you guys this. Well, I do know, but I'm not going to put anybody out there. You know, it's just a misinformation. A lot of, a lot of that misinformation came from the redemption manual and other stuff. But we'll, we'll clear some of that up, okay? Um, so really, you're, you're based in a credit-based system, okay? Um, and I don't know if I said it, but my fragrance of the day is Zherzhov, uh Renaissance. So we're going to get into that. Um, so first, you have to understand what a labor voucher is. And there are certain terms that come with labor voucher, like also known as labor checks, labor notes, labor certificates, and personal credit. OK, most people do not understand that your personal credit is based off of your labor. So you're borrowing against your labor to create a um, an economic instrument, meaning whether it's a credit card agreement, a promissory note for a loan, a promissory note for a, or an, an uh, installment security for a car or a mortgage, you're borrowing against your labor. And with you not knowing this, this is how you become subject to paying for an alleged debt. So first, we're going to start off with Wikipedia. I know Wikipedia is not the most, uh, it's not the greatest source, but, you know, with me doing this as a free thing, I mean, I'm pretty much it's free. So it's there. <laughs> okay, labor vouchers, also known as labor checks. So you notice, um, I remember back in the day, you know, when you used to work. And they were pushing everybody to do direct deposit. And at the time, I was like, why are they pushing everybody? You know, obviously, convenience um, convenience is always beneficial to the so-called um, employee. So, you know, give me my money now. So now I understand why they did it, you know, because it's called a constructive receipt. All right. And I'll show you what a constructive receipt is so you understand that, too. All right. So this is what people are telling you that, oh, you're pay you're being paid in Federal Reserve notes. No, you're being paid in credit. OK, a constructive receipt definition, how it works and example. Constructive receipt is an accounting term that requires an individual or business to pay taxes on income, despite the fact that the money has not yet been received in actuality. What matters instead is that the recipient of the income is able to control or utilize the money even when it is not in hand. For instance, being able to spend funds deposited from a check before it has cleared. Constructive receipts matter for reporting taxable income, especially under the cash basis method of accounting. All right, so when you're receiving these um, credits or these transactions that are processed, whether they're wires or ACHs, they're being processed as credit. So you're basically, the, the employer is crediting on your behalf the amount of alleged uh, money you earned from working certain hours, okay? So I want people to understand that you're really paying yourself in some, like in larger corporations. Now, in smaller corporations, you may not, but in larger corporations, usually you're paying yourself okay so let's get back to <laughs> at hand so your your um when you do direct deposit you usually have a e system or electronic system to where they have a copy of your um your uh checks 
Um, and this is where you get these labor notes or certificates. So they try to say that this is how socialism is done. But, you know, socialism can have a loose definition, uh, just like communism. You know, it can it can be a loose definition. But in this system, you're giving the illusion that you are working for money. And you're not. So they give you credit. And so you can go out and buy goods and services. But you're under this illusion that you're actually earning money. But this is how the system works. You know, nobody is receiving any money. Even if you you receive a Federal Reserve note, once you take that and transfer it to someone else, that's why they usually issue you a receipt. Once they issue you a receipt, you know, that is your your ability to redeem the Federal Reserve note that's transferred because a Federal Reserve note is a promissory note. OK, it does not end the transaction. It is a tender of payment. So let's go to what a tender of payment is. All right. So. Tender of payment. So a tender of payment of an obligation to pay an instrument is made. So I'm just going to use the UCC, even though this is not the definition I was looking for. It's made to a person entitled to enforce the instrument. The effect of the tender is governed by the principles of law applicable to tender of payment under a simple contract. Okay, B, if a tender of payment of an obligation to pay an instrument is made to a person entitled to enforce the instrument and the tender is refused, there is discharge. Okay, yeah, none of these are the actual, uh, what I'm looking about, looking for. I might have to just, yeah, there we go, legal tender. All right, it took a little bit. <laughs> legal, what is legal tender? Legal tender is anything recognized by law uh, as a means to settle public or private debt. So you hear people saying stuff like lawful money versus legal money. It really doesn't matter. Okay. It's just a different set of a, uh, of accounting. Legal tender, lawful tender, doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that the tender of the obligation is complete. Okay. So legal tender is anything recognized by law, to, by the means of law, as I already stated, to, uh, to settle. A, pu a public or private debt or to meet financial obligations, including paying ta uh, including tax payments, contracts and legal fines or uh, damages. The national currency is le legal tender in practically every country. A creditor is legally obligated to accept legal tender towards the repayment of the debt. Now, let's get back to labor. So you wonder why? Why are you coming out of pocket for all this stuff? Why are you coming out of pocket for your car loans? Why are you coming out of pocket for your homes? Okay. You're, you're actually the lowest tier on your account, and you don't even know it. So look, unlike money, unlike money, vouchers cannot circulate and are not transferable between people. They're also not exchangeable for any means of production. Hence, they are not trans, uh, transmutable into capital. So they perfected slavery. That's what people don't understand. So when you're going out getting a job, <laughs> your job is your plantation. And it's not me saying this. I have proof to back this up. This was the whole concept of creating jobs. Some people have to become busy because it, 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 some people are meant to be busy because if they had time to think, they would actually think of ways to where they could earn money in, different, in a different aspect. Once a purchase is made, the labor vouchers are either destroyed or must be re-earned through labor. Sounds familiar. Have you ever heard that phrase? You're working check to check, you're living check to check? Well, yes. Because the amount of income and expenses uh, uh, are, are not correlating. So you're not at a point where your income exceeds your expenses or exceeds it to an amount to where you do not have to continuously work if you don't want to. So sometimes that's where people, you know, get frustrated. They're working. They get into a job. They think I have to keep working a job. That's all they know. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that because you can still get rich working a job. 
but you, it's going to take external stuff. So you're going to always have to set up something external if you have a job because you're, you're not, you're almost never going to get rich working the job. Okay. With such a system in place, monetary theft would become impossible. So if you notice things are tightening up, like with the economic system, uh, you know, the Fed now system and people are, you know, panicking, uh, there's no need to panic. Um, all of this is just, uh fear based and it's just business as usual because it's already business as usual and i'm gonna one of these videos i'm gonna explain to you how the fed really processes payments and, and what the fed really is there for because a lot of people are misinforming you and telling you that the fed is paying your notes and paying all your debt and all this this and that it's not true uh well they are and they aren't not in the concept that people are talking about such a system is proposed by many as a replacement for traditional money. Okay. Even if you work at nine to five, just like I said, you don't redeem your money in Federal Reserve notes. You usually receive a check or a draft or whatever you take to the bank and then they, you deposit it in the bank and they'll say, okay, your funds are already at this time. Your funds will be available at this time. Okay. Traditional money while retaining a system of Renumeration for work done. It is also a way of ensuring that there is no way to make money out of money as in, in capitalist market economy. Additionally, the only kind of market that could exist in the economy operating through the use of labor vouchers would be an artificial market. Ding, 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 ding. Now, Everything from inflation, deflation, the housing market is, is an artificial market. So let's look at a quick. So um, why is this not giving me? Uh, I don't care. Anywho, for the most for mostly non-productive goods and services, as with the dissolution of money, capital markets could no longer exist and labor markets would also le likely cease to exist. With the abolition of wage labor, which would be necessary, to, uh, which be, I'm sorry, would by necessity occur with the adoption of vouchers. But they're already doing it. So if you're working a nine to five <laughs> you're, and you receive a uh, direct deposit, that's a labor voucher. You see what I'm saying? So that's why your, your check acts, it'll say like not for deposit on it because it's a voucher. You see what I'm saying? So author and activist uh, Michael Albert and economist Robert Han Han Hanel, <laughs> I butchered that name, have proposed a similar system of remuneration in their economic system of participatory economics. A difference is that in Parkon, credits are generated, awarded on uh, both the time spent working and the amount of effort and sacrifice spent during labor rather than a simple contribution. Some later advocates of participate participatism and Paracon, or Paracon, I think I'm probably butchering in that, have also proposed awarding more based on job difficulty or danger. In contrast, the physical note or check format used for labor vouchers in the past. Parcon, uh, Paracon credits are, propo um, are proposed as being entirely digital in keeping with advances with technology and are stored in electronic accounts and are usable through cards similar to current day debit cards. See, when you start to understand monetary policy and you understand history, you will understand this was inevitable. You see what I'm saying? Because people were telling you that they talk about the gold standard, not understanding. I'm going to do, you know, I'm, I'm going to do a video talking about the gold standard. They try to, you know, people try to say stuff like they took your money and, you know, the, 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 oh, gold is money. No, it's not. It's not. Gold is a commodity. And I'm going to break it down and I'm going to show you that gold is not money unless it's minted by the government. Okay. Labor vouchers were first proposed in the 1820s by Josiah Warren and Robert o Owen, two 
early attempts at implementing labor vouchers called labor notes at the time of their proponents were made by both following their experiences attempting to establish a utopian community at New Harmony, Indiana, which the currency which currency was prohibited. In 1827, Warren established the Cincinnati Times store where goods could be purchased with labor vouchers representing an agreement to perform labor. However, he folded the store in 1830 in order to devote his effort establishing communities that implemented the, his principles on labor-based prices. Beginning in 1832, Owen and his followers attempted to, to implement labor notes in London and Glasgow by establishing marketplaces and banks that accepted them. See? So this stuff has been happening where you're receiving direct deposits, where you're receiving debit cards, when you're receiving, this stuff was already, they were trying to do this in 1832. So you think this is new, like this credit-based system, you think this, this ain't new. Just like I'll be telling y'all, promissory notes, like to buy houses, that ain't new. <laughs> now, the auto market is different. So, the, you know, the first auto loans were done by General Motors, I think, in 1920. Um, that's why I was telling people that you, they were not buying houses with gold. They were not buying cars with gold. Because I know the history of the monetary policy of the United States. Okay. The followers of Owen stood for society, a cooperative communities of, co sorry, of co cooperative communities. Each community would own its own means of production. And each member of, of the community would work to produce what had been agreed was needed. And in return, would be issued with a labor voucher certifying how many hours he or she has worked a person to then use this labor voucher to obtain from the community stock of com consumer goods and product or products which had taken the same number of hours to produce so they basically like <laughs> we're going to keep you in slavery like basically what this is is a system that you can only buy what your labor produced but this is innately what ended up you know being today's system because if you think about it if your labor produced twenty dollars you can own twenty dollars an hour and you work five five hours you know you can only produce what a hundred dollars buys you so that's what people don't understand that this system that's why you have to understand history because you will understand how the system works see they wanted to keep you in a uh, in a uh, stuck on a plantation so you can't get off and create your own plantation because i guarantee you the person that's, that was recommending that he wasn't living like that <laughs> he i guarantee you he wasn't but he's thinking to keep commerce flowing and to keep prices regulated we'll have to regulate the workers so they could never earn more and and you know they could only buy goods in the area so we're going to get the money back anyway so owen believed that this cooperative commonwealth could be could begin to be induced introduced under capitalism and in the first half of the 1830s some of his followers established labor labor bazaars on the simple similar principle in which workers brought the products of their labor to the bazaar and received in exchange a labor voucher that entitled them to take from the bazaar any items or items which had taken the same time to produce after taking in account the cost of the raw materials these bazaars were ultimately failures of course it is uh, 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 Ultimately, failed. Of course, it was, it, it, because he's trying to he's trying to do the labor based in time instead of doing the labor based in money. So obviously, that was going to fail. But the idea of labor vouchers appeared substantively 
uh, similar forms in France in writings of Pierre Joseph Pradon. Heard that name before? Although he disagreed with the manner in which they were implemented by Owen, they later ad advocated by Karl Marx as a way of dealing with immediate and temporary shortages upon the establishment of socialism. Marx explained that this will be necessary since socialism emerges from capitalism. See, that's why I try to tell you socialism, when everybody's talking about social, that's socialism, blah, blah, blah. It's very, a very loose definition, definition of socialism. So anything could be considered socialism and you'll see that it's implemented, like elements of socialism are implemented in today's, whether you say it's de facto or de jure in today's society, regardless. Okay, capitalism, just, just like you hear people say stuff about free markets and stuff. There's no such thing as a free market because if it was a free market, the person who got rich, got to the finish line, could just stop everybody else from getting to the finish line. So then, then, then nobody would ever be able to make money except for the person that's already rich. So that's why there's there's restrictions on trading and all of this stuff. Capitalism and will be stamped with its birthmarks. And Marx is proposed an earliest socialist society rewarded citizens according to the amount of labor they contributed to society. Well, then that would that would just get rid of all the um, all the government agents, all the CEOs. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That would get rid of all the people who who use their mind to create money. And just saying, you just have to be a you have to just work eighty hours a week or forty hours a week to really you know get out of the rat race. So really, it was a for, it was a if you see what's going on, it's a, a form of slavery. They're trying to trying to they're trying to mitigate how much you earn versus how much you can create. Now, if I can create a product and I can sell that product across the world, why, why should I be limited to what somebody else's idea of, that, of working 40 hours? If I create a product in two hours and take that product and sell it and make $20,000 off of it, why would you be mad at that? You see what I'm saying? This is the problem where, where you have leftist kind of views because in my opinion, the right tries to control people in a certain way, and the left tries to control people in another way. You know, the right tries to control people by saying, this is tradition, and this is how things always went. And the left always tries to control what people say. Or try to make everything so-called equal. Nothing is ever going to be equal. Not in a, a, free, a somewhat free society. The individual producer receives back from society after after the deductions have been made, exactly what he gives to it. That's a good concept to some degree. What he has given to it is his individual quantum of labor. For example, the social working day consists of the sum of the individual's hours of work. The individual's labor, time of the individual's producer, is a part of the social working day contributed by him, his share in it. He receives a certificate from society that he has furnished such and such an amount of labor after deducting his labor from the, from the common funds. That's basically what you're doing. You see what I'm saying? So you're in, like, you're in a social socialist society. That's why you have stuff like social security. That's why they turned history into social studies. These were elements to show you that they were ushering in a socialism, some, some sort of socialism. But they can't fully go socialism because people revolt. You see what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like Christianity and paganism. They had to kind of infuse it so the people didn't uh, uh, revolt. And with this certificate, he draws from the social stock of means of consumption as much as the time, same amount of labor costs. See, this is exactly what's going on. It's just that they didn't just do it off of the, the labor. They did it off of your agreement in the labor that you worked. So if you work a nine to five and then you put in, just like I said, say, or say you work five hours a day and then you make $20 an hour, they're just saying, okay, that you're valued at, hundred dollars. The reason why you're valued at a hundred dollars is because that's what you accepted. That's what you agreed upon. And that's what you agreed to work for. And that's what you thought that you were worth. And that's what you accepted. So 
the same amount of labor has uh, he given to society. Okay, back then. All right. So, however, Marx essentially refused the idea in the poverty of philosophy, especially within the capitalism. Uh, one chapter two subsection. Marx stated that the time in itself separated from other people's time is not suitable to measure the value of work. I know, because he's thinking about, hold up, what about me? <laughs> there will never in history be a totalitarian system. Why? Because rich people or people who are doing well for themselves, they have to create a system that they can always have an out in. So when people think that, oh, this is a new world order and they're going to start doing all this. No. In the system, they're going. They, they will never be, and there has never been through history a totalitarian dictatorship. It's all operated off of the illusion and fear that it could be. Okay, the value is constituted not by the time needed to produce it itself, um, produce it by itself, but in relation to the quota of each and every other product which can be created at the time. According to Marx, the introduction of labor vouchers would create a lazy society and an economy as there would not be uh, concurrency between employers and employees. So nobody would be able to tell what the optimal minimal time was needed to produce something would be. For example, what if Peter works 12 hours a day? Per, per day. Meanwhile, Paul works six hours. That means Peter works six unnecessary hours and his labor vouchers are worth are not worth anything as regarded to six plus hours. Not to mention other factors of work. Summarize Mar Marx's opinion in the poverty of philosophy. The labor voucher is not suitable to create a new socialist society and the theory of Proudhon and others is nothing more than a utopian analogy of the existing capitalist system by Frederick Engels. Proudhon himself tried to introduce the labor voucher system in 1849, but his attempt collapsed soon. Marx was adamant in saying the labor vouchers were not a form of money as they could not circulate. Yeah, because that's going to restrict the, basically, it would, res it would restrict the money supply. Because if, my, if, if I receive a voucher for $100, the moment I spend that $100, it goes out of the, the, the money supply. You see what I'm saying? Where you could take a promissory note, and I could take that uh, $100 bill, and I could hand it to a, a merchant, and then that merchant's going to hand that $100 bill to someone else, and then that $100 bill is going to get handed to someone else. That's the circulation of money. Um, but the way they were doing it is as soon as a person spent the labor voucher, it was taken out of circulation. So that's where some people who think they understand the gold standard really don't understand it. A problem he pointed out with own system of labor notes. Yeah, because it's not going to circulate. And that's that. what that does is that's going to cause a uh, that's going to cause pretty much everything to go out of business. So. During the Great Depression, European communities implemented local currencies with varying success. The aptly named economist, uh, Sir Leo Schielza, I'm butchering that, money, <laughs> advocated for the same monetary scheme in the 1934 product money, Methum, with notes or certificates being issued for productive work and destroyed an exchange for the consumption of goods. See what I'm saying? So they wanted to keep you as a perpetual slave. <laughs> they wanted you in debt consistently, consistently. So that's really what it was. So it was just a way to keep you on the plantation so you never earned enough money to get off of it. In Nazi Germany, Hegem Sajid, Adolf Hitler's finance minister and banker, applied a kind of labor voucher named MEFO bond, whose aim was to hide uh, rear mint programs expenditure before the Western world uh, as, as the big trust 
did not pay by money transfer to each other, but brought MEFO bonds from the state and changed these bonds in closed circuit. Modern implement implementations as time-based currencies were implemented in the United States starting in the 1970s. So we're going to get into things like labor. And we have to understand um, what labor is, you know, labor credits, and why I'm talking about credits. Because when you're working, your, your employer credited, credits your account. They, they, it doesn't have to go through the Fed. Now, the Fed acts as a clearinghouse, you know, for, for your payments. So it doesn't matter if the Fed does it or the Treasury does it. They act as a clearinghouse. I've heard people say the Fed payment doesn't count as you ever paying something, and that's BS. Okay, because it's legal tender. It doesn't matter. So look, labor is also spelled labor in economics, general body of wage earners. It is in, sense, in this sense, for example, that one speaks of organized labor in a more special and technical sense. However, labor means valuable service rendered by a human agent. See? This is the number one reason why you don't receive any income, because you are considered a human agent. <laughs> so people talk about straw, man, that's your straw. No, you're considered an agent, okay? In the production of wealth, you're just an agent. That's why you don't own anything. So it's not some nefarious scheme. That's just what you what it is. I could go back to the Catholic Church setting this up, but right now we're just going to give make sure that you guys have enough education. Other than accumulating and providing capital or some assuming the risk that are a normal part of business undertakings, it includes the services of manual laborers, but it covers many other services as well. It is not synonymous with toil or extortion, and it has only remote relation to work done. In a physical or psychological senses, the application of physical energies of people to the work of products is, of course, an element of in labor. But skill and self-dedication within a larger or smaller sphere are also elements. A characteristic of all labor is that it uses time. See, what you're doing is when you're working a job, you're trading your time for labor credits. See what I'm saying? So the key is in life is to use the least amount of time and to receive the highest amount of labor credits. You see what I'm saying? So whether you sell, you do, you do affiliate marketing or you do something that can make you a decent amount of money, um during your time even though you really don't need the money but i'm just saying you know for for if you're going to use your time you want to use the smallest amount of time and command the highest amount of uh compensation for that time because you, you once we once you're done with this you can't get it back so all these people that are spending eight hours a day working working and working 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 they can't get that back you see what i'm saying you're not going to get that part of your life back so you're going to look up and you you spend 10, 20, 30 years in a corporation and they don't even give you nothing but a damn pin. So, okay. okay. The application of physical energies of people. Are, okay. okay. All characteristics of all labor is used time. Okay. I read that in the specific sense that it consumes some part of the short days and years of the human life. See, that's this. Let me read that again to you, because they know what they're doing by trying to have you work a nine to five. Now, I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just giving you the knowledge that there is something deeper behind it, reason why you feel you need to have a job and why you do have a job, meaning that there are some people who need to stay busy or they'll destroy themselves. And there are some people who don't. So, look, a characteristic of all labor is that it uses time. In a specific sense, that it consumes some part of the short days and years of the human life. They already know that the human life is short, meaning in the physical frame. They already know it. 
So they giving you labor. So then you you stay out of the way. <laughs> and you just keep staying on that treadmill, earn it, earn it, earn it, earn it, earn it. But you never get to, you never get to learn yourself. You never have knowledge yourself. And from there, you waste so much or spend so much time that you you know you don't ascend to a higher level of knowledge. That's why they create jobs. I'm not saying all jobs. There are some jobs that are useful. So I'm not saying all. So I'm not trying to besmirge people or talk bad. I'm just this. I'm just reading the words. That's basically it. Another common characteristic is that, unlike play, it is not generally a sufficient end in itself, but is performed for the sake of its product, or in a modern economic life, for the sake of a claim to share of the aggregate product of the communi community's industry. Even though a laborer who finds his, ch his chief pleasure in his work, commonly tries to sell services or products for the best price that he can get. Is If labor could be measured adequately in simple homogeneous units of time, such labor hours, the problems of economics would considerably would be considerably simplified. But laborers differed in the amount and character of their training in their degree of skill, intelligence, and capacity to direct their own work or work or the work for of others. So it's basically saying like if you're a supervisor, obviously your earning is going to be higher than a person that's lower than you. If you're a CEO, your work is always going to be higher than the person that's lower than you because you're going to also get them to work for lower amounts of money, which means that you have a higher um profit share that's why your bosses make more money than you that's why managers make more money than you because they're there to basically uh keep the herd in line and to keep the business your, a business is never going to care about you because a business is built to be a business is a system so it's a, a a bunch of systems working to keep the business continually in existence so that's why employees get you know come and go but a business a good business module is is hard to hard to defeat and in the other special aptitudes they require that they require task uh, the tasks differ in their eric sumness I'm, I'm butchering that uh i'm gonna have to run that through <laughs> in the prospects that they offer a permanent employment and advancement um, in the social status associated with them and in other characteristics that make one task more attractive than another apart from the circumstances that mobility of labor is imperfect and can that and that it cannot be transferred readily to employments in which it is products have the highest value the wages uh, of different kinds of labor cannot be taken uh, to be payments larger or smaller quantities of labor the price per unit of time that the particular kind of labor commands in the market depends not only upon the technical efficiency efficiency of the labor but also on the de demand of the particular services that he is able to furnish upon their relative scarcity so this is one thing that I'm going to tell you. If you're going to be a laborer, if you're going to be somebody who always upgrade your skills. So if you feel I have to work a nine to five, this is my life. Always upgrade your skills. You never want to be a Betamax. You never want to be a VCR. You don't want to be a CD player. You don't want to be a DVD player. You always want to be something that's technologically advancing every time. Whether you work for a nine to five and you ask your employer how to you know how do you do certain tasks how can you take on certain tasks people may clown you but this is what i used to do when i was in, in a kind of a corporate setting is i would always ask to take on more tasks so i could learn these tasks so i could teach them to other people so really it's your it's about your intelligence that's why some people go to work they're this disgruntled they don't make any more money and they never try to advance within their company so you're never putting yourself out there almost every company i got in advanced very quickly 
because I would learn what I, I would say, hey, I want to learn this. I want to I want to shadow this person. I want to figure this out because I don't want to be the person that's sitting here making ten dollars an hour, 15 hours when I could be making 20. That doesn't make any sense. And upon the supply of other productive agents, thus the attempts of the earlier economists, uh, economists, I'm sorry. Uh, I almost got a little boosty on it. We need our own economy <laughs> and of the socialists uh, to find a simple and direct relation between the value of product and the quantity of labor that in their bodies provided fruitless. Uh, different uses of the availability, uh, I'm sorry, the available supply of labor, whether it is composition can be compared with the reference uh, to the quantity and value of the product that they yield. Okay. So like if you're in sales, you're probably going to make more than somebody that works at McDonald's because it depends on the ticket that you're selling and what kind of uh, money you get off of, off of that sale. Uh, if you work in um, uh, something like an air traffic controller, you're going to make more than a traffic guard. Or a, ma- or a police officer, you know what I'm saying? If you're in um, something like an engineer, you're going to make more than somebody that works in retail. You know, it's, 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 it's kind of common sense. So such comparisons are made continuously in the planting, in the planning and management of competitive business undertakings. By means of econo- <laughs> economic analysis, it is often uh, possible to know whether a proposed charge in the organ change in the organization of the community's labor or in the uses to which it is put as for example by encouraging certain types of industries and experts um, at the um, expense of others would be more likely to increase or decrease the annual production of wealth for individual worker as well as the as for the community as a whole the practicable way of measuring the labor cost of production is by reference to the other products that might have been secured by the means of the same labor or by reference to alternative uses of the time given to labor so we're going to get into We're going to get into labor vouchers again, and so you can kind of understand what you, you're, you know, when you're working, what what you're, what you're kind of getting yourself into. So you're not really exchanging money when you work because people think that I work for money, and you don't. You work for credit. So you don't receive the money. Like just like if people are telling you you're redeeming your paychecks in Federal Reserve note, that's why you're paying taxes. That's a lie. You're agreeing to volunteer to pay taxes. So you already agreed to volunteer to pay taxes. So that's why you pay taxes. That's the only reason you pay taxes. If you if you stop volunteering to pay taxes, you they would the IRS will stop uh, your your employer will stop taking it out of your check and the IRS will stop billing you. So most people don't understand. You volunteer to take to play taxes, and you can, there's forms that you can change. Uh, there's forms that you could change your volunteering to pay taxes, but you have to ch- you know you have to go in and send it to your employer. And if there's an issue with that, you can send it to the IRS saying, "Hey, I don't volunteer to pay any of these taxes because I don't owe it." So unlike money, vouchers cannot be circulated or transferred between people. So there, that's where that's where money creates. Because people think money is some type of gold, silver, whatever. Money is the transaction. Okay, if I if I do a transaction with you, that transaction and that transfer creates a uh, it creates not per se money, but it creates its equivalent. Okay, because it's, it's done at a dollar amount. Okay, so nor can they be converted into capital. So that means that they're not negotiable. That means they're not transferable. They're just, once you use them, they're extinguished. So obviously for a system that is growing and trying to do transactions with other nations, 
you have to have a currency that's going to continuously circle. And that currency has to be borrowed at interest so the debt never gets paid. Otherwise, if you pay off the debt, then <laughs> then what it was what's next so that's the type of system that you're in and i know people think that's evil but think about the when you if you use something and extinguish it you know you have to keep creating a system like you the only way that transaction will be done is just do the services of goods and it would shrink the market well now we have a market where there's so many transactions done if you if you understand forex and all this stuff, there's so many transactions done in the dollar, done in the GDP. I mean, I'm sorry, done in a, a Great Britain pound, uh, done in the yen, and these are through the forex system. So, a gold standard really is not needed because you can't prove that the the government holds that amount of gold. That's why people are like, "What are you talking about?" You know. So look, once the purchase is made, the labor token must be destroyed or reacquired through labor. See, that puts you in perpetual debt slave. That makes you a perpetual debt slave. Because every every month or every week, you're going to need to get some food. Every week, you're going to need to get some power or so, something. So they're like, if you don't work, you don't eat. So yeah, that's kind of good, but then it's kind of not. Because what happens if you get injured? Now you can't work. Now who's going to take care of you? So if such system introduced the theft of money would be impossible. I mean, not really. Somebody could just steal your labor credits and take over your name. Such system has been proposed by many as an alternative to traditional money while maintaining a reward system for work done. This is also how we make sure that there is no way to make money out of money, like in a capitalist uh, market economy. See, they don't want you to make money out of money. <laughs> yeah because that means that somebody's trying to control they're trying to control your your mobility whenever somebody is trying to whether they're trying to ruin your credit whether they're trying to um uh make you liable for a court case they're trying to they're trying to control your mobility somebody trying to say you owe a debt and then they trying to throw the debt on you yeah they're trying to control your mobility that's what I used to, you know, back in the days in Detroit, they would say that people were upwardly, uh, they would say that there was white flight. What they really meant is the people who had money flew, to, they fled the city. There is no white flight. You either got money or you don't. Like in a capitalist uh, market economy, moreover, uh, the only kind of market that can exist in an economy operated through the use of labor certificates is an artificial market. So that's basically what I just read. So, yeah, it, it's pretty much a system that we operate in today, which is an artificial market system. It's not real. You know what I'm saying? So when people are saying stuff like we need to get back on the gold standard, it's, it, that's extremely ignorant. Um, and it's unknowledgeable that that gold is a commodity. It's not a it's not what they were using to purchase houses and homes back in those days. So, the, yeah, they didn't have some of the instruments like they didn't have some some of the mortgages and stuff that they had now you know, like 30 year mortgages and stuff. The reason why they started doing that is because securitization to keep the money flowing and keep the system keep, you know, going. Um, but yeah, I was going to read something else, but I'm just going to get off here. I think I read enough. I'm out.